Hi there, this is Dawn, and let me get it straight here. Okay, hi. Um, so I am here to share a video with you, and hopefully we won't have too much noise. There's a little bit of noise outside right now. Um, yeah, since the video will be a little bit on a serious topic, um, and uh, but before I get into that, let me just say that I have been, um, as uh, some of you know from my previous videos, um, that I've been in New Orleans um, or the area, the vicinity, for the last couple of weeks and here for a little bit longer here and then be moving on to the next location. But what I have been processing both, uh, both personally and collectively has, has taken a toll. Um, and that said, that you know, that said Jesus, and actually aside, Jesus Christ, who was in fact a real person, <laughs> not created, not an invention actually of the Catholic Church, but rather a real person whose truth was co opted by many individuals um, and institutions through time and and sadly this continues right in our time but Jesus along with many many angels disguised as humans here that I have met along the way um, they um, along with the statue of Louis Armstrong um, looking up at skies of blue and in this wonderful world and, and many many moments of grace have been a constant reminder uh, in my time here, that the toll that I think life has taken on me, um, particularly in this recent passage, um, this this toll that I think has been taken will actually ring out as a testimony, and the song of my soul will come and it'll go. Okay, it won't stay here forever, but all true tones remain. And this is the, the message that Jesus um, has given me, is that all true tones remain. And this is true for each one of us, whether regardless of whether we share publicly or not, um, you know, whether you ever even talk to anyone, um, the true tones echo out and create. You know, I often talk about this timeless tapestry of truth that we are co-creating, but if you think of it in terms of sound and frequency, I mean, isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? So I just wanted to share that here at the beginning. So I have been a bit, um, it's been, uh, it's, it, it's been um, trying um, and yet, um, as is always the case, an opportunity for upliftment and growth. And so I'm holding on to that. I also want to mention um, along those lines that I did remove a few videos that I posted about where I am specifically and what I am doing and what I have seen. My choice to do that had absolutely nothing to do with uh, anything that I didn't want to have said in those videos, and it has everything to do with what I am sharing today, and I'll leave it at that. Uh, in fact, I have more to share um, on uh, what's happened when, I was he when I've been here, but I, I think I'll just, um, I'll pass on that for now. It's my choice. Um, so my choice to remove those videos, you know, was it, it had to do with what I'm going to share today, um, which is that we, we live in a world and we belong to a society and to a community here, this online community, whatever you want to uh, label it, um, and in a larger spiritual community and, and the larger community of those who are aware and awake and, and uh, have absolutely had enough with the travesty of the human condition and particular um, anchoring issues related to that. Um, all of those facets, the society, this larger spiritual community, the online community, there are members within those communities, and in fact every community I would say, um, who think nothing of derision and ridicule and mockery. And I must speak about this um, because to not speak would be um, to diminish my own true tones. So I will speak, and, and the title of this video is going to be something to, akin to, you know, ridicule and mockery have no place in the hearts of those who serve God, who claim to be representatives of God and Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus, or whatever you want to label uh, that. And let's be clear um, that it is the full spectrum of humanity that matters. 
the full spectrum, you know, in that sense. I love it that the thunderstorm's about to begin. Hopefully it doesn't knock out the internet. If it does, I'll just, I'll keep recording and I'll, I'll find a way to upload this, piece it together. So ridicule and mockery have no place in the hearts of those who serve God. I want to invite us each, I want to invite us to think critically and compassionately about the times that you yourself have experienced mockery and ridicule and the times in which you have participated in it. I want to invite you to think critically and compassionately about the times that you may have remained silent or overlooked something that was mockery and ridicule or liked it just because it was the trending thing to do or maybe not given it your like and thought that was enough. I want to invite us to think critically and compassionately those are not two different things. To bring those capacities together, critical thinking, heart, compassion for one another, love. I wanna invite us to connect to those things and let those be our anchors as we evaluate the nature of what is happening in our time and in whatever community you see that it may be happening in and it's everywhere, so. Uh, pick one, <laughs> you know, and I want I want you to think critically and compassionately. So about times when you have participated in the propagation of mockery and ridicule, and given yourself a pass because you're not creating it, and because see, here's the thing: in this culture of collusion that we have co-created, this is has been normalized. This is the norm. It is our way of engaging with one another, and it remains the norm even among those who see themselves um, as and uh, perhaps in many ways are enlightened and awake. And in, in many cases, to include my own experience in this life, um, we people, myself included, have been conditioned to operate from a place of mockery and ridicule. And I, I feel it's imperative that we really look at this so let's look at definitions you know i love to do this so ridicule ridicule is the subjection of someone or something to contemptuous and dismissive language or behavior as in he is held up as an object of ridicule notice the objectification and consider that that's what must happen when one is ridiculing um, and and mockery is their related concepts so uh, synonyms for ridicule, mockery, derision, scorn, scoffing, contempt, jeering, sneering, teasing, taunting, sarcasm, satire, lampooning, caricature, parody, or vulgar slang, taking a piss, and that's pretty much what it feels like, what it looks like, and what it is. Let's call it for what it is, okay? Um, the opposite of uh, the, I'm sorry, the opposite um, of ridicule. Let me stay with ridicule for a minute. I wanted to get to mockery. The opposite of ridicule is actually praise and respect. Um, anyone who knows me personally, like as a friend anyway, who we have these heart to heart conversations knows that the one thing that absolutely, I, I, it just provokes <laughs> such, um, like fury in me is, is the lack of of decency, respect, and honor for one another. And um, I, as everyone, have my own blind spots in that regard. But when I see this, um, and particularly, it's much easier for me, of course, to, you know, just because of the nature of the way I'm wired, to identify it when it's broader. That's just the way my brain works, and, and it's kind of who I'm meant to be in this in this place, and, and, and who it's, it's authentic to who I am. Um, and yet it's important to look at on a microcosm level and the macrocosm level. And, and so praise and respect are the opposite of ridicule. So let's keep that in mind. Let's look at mockery. Um, give me just a second. Mockery, here we go. Teasing and contemptuous language or behavior directed at a particular person or thing, as in, I was stung by her mockery, or, uh, oh, stung by her mockery, Frankie hung his head, 
Okay, so notice the result of mockery. And, and you can pick any example of when you have seen this in real life. M mockery is a diminishment. And just my basic question here, if you don't watch very much longer, is this. Is that aligned with the heart of God? Is that aligned with love? Is that aligned with freedom? Is that aligned with the upliftment of all creation? Is it even creative? I would argue that it is not. It's a diminishment, it's a contraction, it's a retraction, it's a dismissal. It's a disservice to uh, humanity, to the person it's directed at, and to the person who is perpetuating it. So that's what mockery is. Mockery is uh, teasing and contemptuous language or behavior directed at a partic particular person or thing. Uh, or an abs absurd misrepresentation or imitation of something. So an example of that usage would be after a mockery of a trial, he was executed. <clears throat> Antonyms for mockery. So what's the opposite of to mock? The opposite of to mock is to be authentic, bona fide, legitimate, true, premium, quality, valuable, unadulterated, genuine, natural, real. These are the things to which we should espouse. These are the approaches by which we can stand for what we believe in, by which we can elevate that which we want to see come to fruition, by which we can be a participant in the dialogue that needs to occur between and among us, beginning within us, in order for us to be uplifted for the liberation, the true liberation of humanity. And that means all. So my question is, are these not things that we, we seek to be as children of the light, as children of God? Do we not seek to be authentic, legitimate, true, premium, quality, valuable, unadulterated, real, natural, nature? I would say yes, that is exactly who we are as, as children of God. This is, you know, if we seek to live from a place of love, and a love that is without condition, then are these not the things that we aspire to? Isn't this who we want to be as those who are called according to his purpose for this time who know this? It's a sincere and honest question. Because I, I just um, am having a difficult time understanding from all the directions it's coming from, all the directions and directed at uh, the, the most uh, obviously directed at the polar opposites and most obviously in the realm of politics. But this is not a response to any one particular um, example of mockery or ridicule. I imagine if you go to your YouTube feed or like, you know, just the general YouTube page, because it depends on what you subscribe to, you right? And, um, but if you go to the general YouTube uh, page, and by the way, I haven't even watched about like, I've seen titles for about, I would say, seven or eight mocking videos, <clears throat> um, most of which are about these broader issues, um, and I haven't, I haven't watched them. So this is not in response to any one person's point of view at all. It's, it's, I want to talk about the entire culture of collusion in which mockery and ridicule are normalized and accepted by people who say they are, they stand for the light and for life and for love, who say they are followers. Um, and believers who say they are aligned with the will of God, who say they stand for all of humanity, who say they stand for freedom and love and principles. So the point of this soul share, and that's what it is, it's me sharing my perspective, my point of view, and from my soul, informed by what I feel and believe and know um, of my experience uh, of both faith and life. And it's about integrating um, those parts of ourselves that have been separated out from faith and therefore fallen into fear or other um, darker webs. Um, and, and it's about bringing, bringing that it's about reclamation, the radical reclamation of that and, and walking in the way of our lives, walking in the way of wholeness. So this is the soul share. It's just I'm offering what I'm offering up 
for consideration is this assertion that ridicule and mockery, mockery I'm having trouble saying mockery. I keep wanting to say mockery. Interesting. Okay. Ridicule and mockery have no place in the hearts of those who serve God, for it cannot exist in the heart of God. It can't because it's a diminishment. Where we see ridicule and mock mockery, see, I did it again. I'm going to have to think about what that means. Where we see, oh, okay. I'm going to leave it unspoken. Where we see ridicule and mockery, let it be an invitation to return to love, to stand in the gap, to return to that still center point between the poles. I talked about that in my last video. To bear sacred witness to the pain of the world and to the pain of our own life's journey or experience. And then, not end there, not stay stuck in the pain, but then to allow ourselves to be raised up and set free in love, by love, for love. For that is what we are here for, to be love, to know, to experience fully the love that we are. For that's who we are called to be. It is the true nature, the natural, authentic, real, genuine version. It's not a perversion. And mockery and ridicule are always a perversion. So let it be seen for what it is and let it lead us back to the heart of God. And let us see the contrast, okay? Let's see the contrast between enhancement and showing up with love in the day and bringing things to light. Let's see the contrast of those choices with the contrast uh, of the choice to diminish, to hide in shadow and laugh from afar, from whatever, behind uh, uh, nice images or that you've pieced together or, you know, the, the trickery and the illusion. Um, and, and let's look at the difference again between um, bringing things to light, because there's value in that, bringing things to light. And it may be that, you know, I think it is actually that some of, some of what is presented in the frame of mockery and ridicule is actually valuable information. And yet it is presented in such a way that absolutely is playing games in the dark. It has no place, no place for those who are called to and who want to live in the heart of God, who want to be, um, representatives of light and life and love, which is who we are at our very core. It is the nature, the true nature of who we are. So there's only one thing, well not, I won't say only, there is one thing though that sinks us lower than making a mockery uh, of democracy. I wrote about that in recent poems or making a mockery of our own collective journey because, oh, humanity is so dumb, we don't get it. You know, that sort of attitude. There is one thing that sinks a little bit lower than that and that is to make a mockery of a human soul any human soul any human soul even one that you believe is soulless even one that you believe is devoid of life that's my point of view um, and it's it's a low again that has become normalized not only just in society that was one thing but uh, within um, coming from those um, who are saying to the masses in many cases and then you know in, in our day-to-day -day lives as well um, those who say that they are living their lives from love so this isn't about perspectives. It's definitely not about the two polar political opposites of Donald Trump and Joe Biden, both of, get, uh, both of which you know get plenty of hate. It's not about anybody in any other country either. We can we can you know like we could talk about this ad infinitum, right? And it's not about this race or that race or this gender or that gender or this perspective or that perspective or the people in the spiritual community on this side or that side. It's not about any of that. It's simply about the fact that we must find our way back. If we choose to stand in love, find our way back to honor and respect. And it has to be done 
for our own human soul and our own journey back to sacred wholeness, our own journey to soulful transformation, those twin journeys we are making at once all the time, simultaneously. And it has to be done one moment at a time for everyone that shows up as a mirror of someone who maybe is mocking us, or someone who um, is mocking another, someone who is appears to be a fool to us, someone who appears to be devoid of a soul to us. This is my heartfelt belief. It's my knowing. So I just want to share a little bit of personal and collective experience. I'll probably put timestamps below in case you want to skip one or the other. Uh, and then I'll sum it up at the end and I'll, I'll put a timestamp for that as well. So like, let's just look at personal. How does this play, play out on a personal level? Because see, the thing is, many of us um, become so accustomed to it that we actually are unaware of it. I know that's been the case for me in the past. Um, it breaks my heart. But it's a reality. So uh, I, I want to be clear, though. I in no way see myself as a victim in places where I have been mocked recently or, you know, going way back, uh, even to other, you know, um, experiences, uh, cosmically, galactically, <laughs> you know, lifetimes, whatever, and certainly not in this life by um, any of the encounters that I've had. Similarly, uh, I come to a place of love and compassion for myself in places where I've participated in this, and we all have. Um, so I don't see myself as a victim, and nor do I see those um, being preyed upon currently as victims. I'm not here to defend anybody, <laughs> um, you know, anybody that is being mocked. Um, I am here to talk about the larger reality that that is not, it, it simply is not the way of love. It is not the way of wholeness. It is not the way that is uh, aligned with the heart of God. Surely, there can be no defense of that. And if you would like to make a defense, please, you know, be, be my guest. Um, I'm not interested in engaging um, in a back and forth about that. Um, but certainly welcome you to, you know, voice your perspective. Because as we voice our perspectives, we all, <clears throat> you know, when we show up with our full hearts, when we show up aligned with the heart of God, the true heart of who we are authentically, not some false God, you know, not some false light, not some false Jesus or some, <laughs> some non-Jesus um, and some, or okay, or not, uh, not just simply these concepts, not simply a war against the evil. There is definitely evil. Anybody who knows me knows that I have been called for this very purpose to be to bear witness and to do what I am able to do, which isn't much, but to be a light within myself and hold the light up to the dark corners and in particular facets. You know, some of us are, are called to particular issues and some of us more broadly. And then, you know, there's a, actually there's most of us have a little bit of both, right? And it's just, it's just that's how it's so marvelous, right? Because it's all unique. but. So I don't see victims uh, in those who are the targets of current mockery or belittling or ridicule, and nor do I see myself as a victim. But I see a sick society. I definitely see a sick society. I see hearts that have been broken. I see humans whose hearts have been so broken that they're you know, reverting to uh, bad behavior by being complicit with a culture of collusion by lowering themselves, by not honoring themselves enough to act in a way that is truly aligned with their authentic nature and with the heart of God. I know with absolute certainty that some of the people, for example, who uh, have directed at me mockery or ridicule would never ever ever have done so in a million years lifetimes if they understood anything of the limitations in terms of perspectives or functioning or the incapacity brought about conditions that uh, i personally have lived through and i know that to be the case for um these broader examples of this as well okay so i i want to, us to have compassion for those who have done the mockery 
and, and the derision and those who have been on the receiving end of it and those who have just been bewildered by it, all of it, all of it, a big, 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 big circle that's ever, ever, ever expanding, an ever exp expanding sphere of infinite grace. That's what I want to invite us into. This is the circle of recreation. It is where it is. It is where we are. Um, it is how we will find our way forward. So I also know at a soul level that when I've participated in in mockery or ridicule, when I've done this um, to another, I know the same is true. It was a result of my own short sightedness, my inability to connect to clear sight, clear seeing. I did not have eyes to see. I was not energetically clear enough to come close to seeing the pure radiance of light and the beauty of that individual soul, that the beauty and the radiance that was before me. And this is true on a, with broader issues as well and with, with uh, more public figures as well. And so I might have labeled some one or some group, or I might have corrected, offered a corrective, or I might have cast them aside. Okay, and so this is this is how this happens. It's how it begins anyway, and then it, it can lead to full scale mockery and ridicule, which is rampant in at least I'm in the United States and in, at least in our society. Although from what I can tell, it is um, it is rampant everywhere. Um, in free societies and so we've all experienced this and you know most of us have been uh, mocked either directly or indirectly in certain certain circumstances in a way that preyed upon us energetically um, it can happen within a family system within a work system within a societal framework that supposedly is set up to help you to support you it happens all the time so just some quick examples. I think everybody's you know, getting what I'm talking about, but some quick examples. So you know, I once sat in a room where I was surrounded by family members, the, close, the people in this world that um, loved me the most. Uh, that was my, my belief at that time and, and you know, still probably would be. And yet, you know, here we are in a setting of, supposed to be a happy setting of vacation where every person uh, there, and there were many people there, with the exception of um, uh, of my son, perhaps, um, who, by the way, was irrevocably harmed by this situation. But um, they began to mock um, and belittle m me in in the name of jest and and fun, but in ways that were actually quite cruel. Um, and dismantling and this diminishment of me my heart my authentic self my simple choice to give myself the gift of reading a book <laughs> this was what was apparently the cause of this and so at the time I gave it I didn't give it my attention because I felt that that was taking the high road um, and this went on for an extended period of time while they played a game of cards um, and it wasn't funny And I thought, well, if I, if I say nothing, then it will come to them. Um, I'm not sure it ever did. Um, and, you know, I kind of regret, like, okay, at this point, looking back, and that was, you know, it was about 10 years ago or at least, at least nine, or, yeah, nine or 10 years ago. And um, I, I somewhat regret not, you know, taking a stand for myself, speaking up. And yet, who's to say, you know, but, but, I, I thought it was the better course at the time to to do what I thought was choosing love and and to not respond in anger certainly which because of my own wounding I might have done um, so we've all been we've all at least witnessed such a scene most of us have been the object of, of mockery or ridicule in some place or time and it does happen in families quite a bit because of this conditioning and I know that I myself projected that on others and we have, you know, we, we may have experienced it ourselves, and we've certainly all been participants to one degree or another, whether we've been the one doing, you know, 
parroting out certain uh, phrases and or um, comments that we pass off as humor, that's not funny. Uh, or you know, we've remained silent. You know, maybe it's gossip about, you know, another person from a family member uh, or within a, a friend's uh, circle or within a workplace environment or within, you know, can be a social at the, you know, bar or the walking down the street for that matter. It's everywhere. It's truly rampant. And I don't know the answer. Like, I don't know. I, I'm navigating all of that myself. But what I'm trying to do here is to point out the larger issues. And, you know, it can even happen in a crowd of so-called like raving fans, right, who are at a rally or applauding change, but then closing their eyes to the change that must begin within, within that group, party, system, um, you know, any, any uh, organization uh, of any kind. And, and so it's part, this is all a part of these levels um, and, and this culture of collusion. And the mockery is so rampant in terms of a default way of engaging with life that it can begin to feel as if we are being mocked um, by people from every side and we can then shut down, right? We can lose our connection to ourselves. This is the true cost. This is the true cost of someone watching you mock another individual regardless of who that is and how ridiculous their behavior might have been and or how uh, the true issues at the core. So again, I'm not saying that the true issues don't need to be spoken about. I'm saying that when you do it in such a way, you diminish others and yourself. I have watched this happen again and again and again. I've watched, you know, I've watched my own innocence and purity been labeled as naive and gullible and, and my, my essential truth that I'm here to share and my wisdom um, that Spirit has um, graciously given me I've, I've uh, watched that be labeled, say, misguided or, or me a fool, playing a fool's game. And I've watched this happen to others um, in all sorts of societies and, and groups. You know, I've wa I watched it a long time ago in, in um, the church and religion, and I've watched it in um, clubs. I've watched it in um, neighborhoods. I've, and I've... I've uh, I've witnessed it, you know, in the online community as well, and and I've participated in it, sadly, um, though I now see that I did so when I participated from not understanding what it was that I did, and this may be the case for many of the people who are engaging in this behavior. I don't know. Um, I'm not judging it by any means because, you know, look, let's face it. First of all, anyone can, you know, gather up strands from somebody's life and make a mockery of them. Um, and Certainly, any one of us has made mistakes in terms of judging another, whether that be a public figure, which are easy marks, um, or uh, you know, someone personally. So in social circles, like how often do we see one person suddenly um, and quite viciously turn? Typically, the way they do this is by casting themselves as a victim um, and then casting someone else in this perpetrator role, uh, looking for a rescuer, wanting to move uh, the positions. Tra it's trading positions. It's the same thing that I talked about in the in the larger video. That I mean, in the uh, larger uh, context or conversation that I was when I was talking about the um, trading positions in terms of this culture of collusion and how crimes against humanity are perpetuated. This is the same thing that happens. Um, it, it happens, you know, throughout society at every level, from the microcosm, macrocosm. And, and so how many people do we see this? And then it's the same old tired dynamic, and it's a lie. It's an illusion. Because in truth, this endless game of trading positions and trying to move people about like chess pieces, it's an illusion that keeps us tra trapped in a cycle of believing that we are far less than who we are or trying to make someone else feel as they are far less than who they are. It is not honoring, it is not respectful, it is not aligned with the heart of God. We must ask ourselves where we ourselves are tracing old familiar lines, whether that's an ancestral pattern we are replicating, um, 
or it is simply our um, yeah it could be just you know wrote uh, because we've been programmed or, or running in circles right and and we have to ask ourselves where are we doing that instead of returning to our true center instead of residing in the heart of God and we see it in the business world too um, even in in the world of, of love leadership so I you know in my own case I have ideas that were original um, ideas that were taken they, they were literally seized and stolen um, and I wasn't aware of it for a while and and in some cases it's very difficult to do anything about it um, because of various realities but um, you know businesses um, or a business anyway that I started was co-opted completely and then and pure life force energy that was aligned with those ideas was in the process there was an energetic uh, thievery or robbery or um, it, that was stolen too okay and so I'm trying to point out the energetic patterns that happen here I don't have the words and you know that's one of my shortcomings so you can mock me if you want I'm tired of it <laughs> um, yeah it's not deserving of my attention where that's been happening personally but you know I was long aware for example of in, in one case of um, you know where this this happened to me personally you know like a huge you know well a public figure um, took a pure idea um, I'll just leave it at that and and it made it into something that looks really pretty it sounds really good especially when it's you know you're lulled by the voices that are like magic moon drops in our eyes um, and and eyes that are dreamy or and I'm talking about several people here not just my my personal example but this has happened to many people right or you know or someone who's like good looking and delightful to gaze upon or you're wowed by their super intelligent recitation of great reveals that are actually truth <laughs> but done in such a way that is dishonest and so therefore devoids the truth be itself that is being revealed do you see what happens here when we participate in this game of derision um, so and when and when those individuals again knowingly or unknowingly some of this I think happens on a subconscious level they're not aware of what they're doing um, they hoodwink and captivate this wide broad audience um, and sometimes even the one who was energetically used to create whatever has been created and it's again takes us off course um, as humanity as a people who are certainly designed we are created free we are born free we are meant to live free but this takes us further away from freedom regardless of what the message that's being um, offered is it's a travesty and you know here in in uh, let's see the, say the uh, larger spiritual community at large and it's becoming you know larger and larger if you if you look at the entire um, what's the word I can't remember the word but uh, I can't believe I can't remember that word but the entire um, cohesive group right that espouses um, certain things and then you know you can you can break that out in, in lots of ways based on beliefs based on whether you're you know operating in uh, your local geographic area um, online etc cetera, etc cetera. but the point is that it happens in uh, communities where we all stand for love and unity I'd like to provide a few examples there, but I'd also like to stay up front that these are not all about me, okay? So I'm just gonna share a few things that come up for me. Um, and where they are about me, without exception, I hold the deepest love and honor for those individuals who participated in you know, what was maybe, maybe about me, maybe not, I don't know. Well, in some cases I do. <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway my point is that we can hold honor um, and love for one another and choose to make a choice to see things in a different light okay so it's all a play of light isn't it it's all a play of light I talked about this when I I did the journey on the Jesus uh, Judas divide and um, 
in a different light, when we see things in a different light. We do see it's all a play of light. Um, and yet that does not excuse, that does not give us a free pass to just be silent in the face of mockery, in the face of ridicule. I'm sorry, I don't believe that at all. I believe that to stand with the heart of God and to be aligned with love requires that we live in love. Now, sometimes that means an overt action and sometimes it means a, a less overt action such as prayer or meditation or returning to stillness or journaling or a walk in the woods. So a few examples, let me go back to um, what, what I've learned about myself in all of this, you know, especially when I have felt the object of it is that I am sustained from within by the grace of God and God alone. I am designed, we are each equipped, fully equipped for full thriving in this life. We are light and life and love and we are sourced from within by the eternal source that is God and God is love. So I see it as one and the same God and love and, and to live in the heart of God and the heart of love. One must return to that full honoring of that eternal uh, and infinite supply of love and reject all things that are limitation or diminishment or contraction. Reject as in not participate in and where it is seen value the invitation, say yes to the invitation to life and what is aligned with life and life, light and life and love and to return to the way of wholeness and to refuse to be a part of a culture of collusion but instead to align oneself fully with love. So some examples, so someone may con condemn you for speaking in the precise way you are called by God to speak and denies actually what is happening there is they're denying the sharing of their own light or diminishing the sharing of their own light in order to seek to extinguish yours whether that's a momentary lapse or a, a sustained um, attempt it comes from pain of course from hardship or by from the infiltration of the dark uh, another example someone could create a, a platform a um, set of principles um, that is over and against it's it's over and against what you or someone else is presenting and so that's the whole seed energy of it you see it's it's uh, op oppositional and this is a perpetuation of the heinous hierarchical systems that are about domination and control that have gotten us to where we actually are and so to do things in that manner in that way is not aligned with love and there is another way to voice your truth um, that is not about the diminishment of others again I'm not saying that one uh, should not speak and, uh, um, toward the refinement of ideas I absolutely believe that's an imperative and yet do you see it's about the way in which we do this there is a way to do that that is rooted in love that is honoring that is respectful we must all myself included learn um, or seek to learn more fully what it means to walk in the way of wholeness with honor and respect for one another uh, another example others may um, mock you for the way you speak the words you use or don't use how it sounds whether it comes off as dumb which is a label or uh, someone on their high horse which is a judgment or someone who is trying to present themselves in a certain manner which even if it's true who are we to focus there it may come when someone um, belittles what you have in your environment when you are making a video 
<laughs> the way your hair looks. Um, and and this, again, these aren't all personal examples. Um, that one probably is, but um, the, um, the or the degree of expertise that you have in making things look perfect or pretty or you know polished, um, or the, your understanding of technology or your ability to speak. Um, shall I continue? Um, you know, there's it's infinite how we can criticize and condemn one another, and for what? It's a waste of time, is what I'm saying. And so, still. Even when these observations are valid, there's a diminishment, both of the one they are directed toward and of oneself, the one espousing these. Sometimes this is presented, it comes off as a def defense. You know, somebody gets up and, and it, because they've put themselves in some victim role, which even if it's the case, do you really want to do that? Um, but many times what uh, I've witnessed, it's actually not the case when, when I've witnessed uh, people doing this toward me or I've definitely witnessed it toward other people. And I'm like, wow, that's interesting because I know that's not actually what's happening because I can read the energy of it. And so, so all these things diminish um, the one that they are directed toward and they steal a gift that's meant for the many by stamping it with this big stamp that says dismissed, disapproved discarded, disavowed, dis, dis, dis. Do you see? That rhymes with something. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a diminishment. It's um, a dishonoring, most of all. And the third thing that happens there is not only does it diminish the one doing the mockery or the ones doing the mockery and the one it's directed at, it also diminishes those who are bystanders, innocent bystanders in many cases. And, and it has a, it takes a toll on and has an effect on those toward whom the mockery uh, is directed uh, and those who are robbed of a gift of life through that can be lifted up as light from whatever is being espoused and also it robs another of the model of speaking your truth even if it is needing to voice a, an alternate perspective to what someone else has um, espoused in love. It's not easy to do, I'm the first to admit that, but it's something that we are called to. If we, if we are real, if we are real about what it means to be free, if we are real about what it means to live in love, if we are real about perfect harmony and 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 all things that rise and converge but not blend into one, right? That's the thing. We've got to allow the space for each voice. It, it really hurts those uh, who are participating in, in, in any facet, right? Who, whether you're speaking it, whether you're on the receiving end of it, whether you're witnessing it, whether you're uh, going along with it, for whatever purpose or whether you are consuming it even when you don't agree with it that's something that i have really understood in this last year or two as this uh, ratcheting up has occurred um, in by the way in every pocket of society with regard to multiple issues not just political but clearly it can be seen politically and you know, I wrote a poem back in 1999 called The Third World War Within the Hearts of Man. And that's the thing. We've got to understand that this, before we are so quick to move to mockery or ridicule or derision, we've got to return to walking in the way of wholeness and to our whole hearts. We've got to be with ourselves. We've got to love the parts of us that are so wounded or so angry or so sad or so consumed or washed up washed out to sea we got to love those parts within us another example of this that I have experienced personally it took me a long time to understand what was happening I kind of had an inkling at the very beginning a couple years ago but I was like that can't be right that can't be right well it it, it was right another person might co-opt your demeanor, your language, or your, um, and, and in fact create sort of a, a, their own iteration of that 
Um, sometimes it's, you know, in terms of looking um, as a, a healer or spiritual leader or a um, leader of a movement, which those people might actually be. And yet, because they have co-opted something that it's not, they're not coming from their authentic, essential truth within, but rather taking what is someone else's and using um, their energetic signature and or their ideas and their methodologies or their language and mannerisms. When that happens, um, it can happen a lot of different ways. Um, I, I believe it can happen by energetic cloning technologies, aka black magic, um, and it can sway thousands upon thousands of people. And it can be done sometimes when that person's not aware of what they're doing, and sometimes when they're partially aware of what they're doing, and other times when they're blatantly aware of what they're doing. And so I've, w I've witnessed this, in addition to it happening to me, I've witnessed it with other people. And so this may feel like a, a triumph, right? It may feel like, like a triumph for that person or for those who are followers of that individual. Um, it might appear to be a force for good for many, many years, decades, could be centuries, could be thousands of years. I know a story in which that was the case. But it is a Tower of Babel, and it is built in the name of unity, but in a way that is not aligned with unity. And in all due time, it will fall, it will crumble. And the motives of the builder, which were inauthentic, will be made plain to see. And this is very difficult for uh, when it happens uh, to you, when you witness it, when someone else witnesses the entire um, scenario, because it's actually easier to see when you're outside of it. And so that thereby keeps people stuck in, who, you know, what we might judge as an unenlightened reality. Well, why do, you, why do you think sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes they are stuck there because they have witnessed this sort of mockery and ridicule. It is no different than what happened um, in, in the church or in religious uh, structures and, and within many societal systems. Um, it is no different than what we would, uh, you know, see as um, hypocrites. It's no different than it was in the time of Jesus. So out of nowhere, sometimes, people can come on the scene when it's not personal, okay? And people can come on the scene, um, or actually, let's do this. Let's, it can be both, right? It can be personal, and it can be not personal. Um, but they can come on the scene, and they can slap up a video um, where it's nothing but creating uh, another false narrative to supposedly enlighten those who are supposedly believing a false narrative. And it's done by people who purport to be working diligently against the false narrative. And um, they, at times I've seen this happen where like they give themselves a name, like for, you know, um, ongoing series um, of, of um, videos or, or maybe just for um, one purpose. And, but the, that itself can be done in such a way that's not aligned with love or the heart of God because it is a mo it's a mockery of either a group of people or an individual or um, a particular perspective. And sometimes they can, um, with words, um, titles or words or um, labels themselves um, uh, seek to align themselves with a higher something that gives them a higher endorsement um, and you know I am not immune to this I'm sure that there may be times when I've done the same truly um, and it's an invitation for all of us to look at this um, and they they may do this like out of nowhere and about nothing um, but then speak in in, in such a way that there is the energy of disdain and vitriol and not love and call it love or say they're calling other people out for not being love which again they may have a valid point 
they absolutely may have a valid point, but is that the way in which we are on? Is, is that truly, a, isn't that disharmonious with being on a path of love and of unity where all belong? I'll say personally, when one is the target of that sort of scenario, particularly when it's not even true, <laughs> like what? Um, it can be very damaging, particularly when it it's like, I, I liken it to like what happens in the, you know, the, uh, when you're first waking up to the fact that you're in a relationship like with a narcissist, right? Because it's so shocking, you can't actually, there's like, there is cognitive dissonance. You can't believe it's happening. Like what? These are, what? These are my sisters. These, these are my mothers. These are my daughters. And, and I've personally experienced that in my own personal journey too. So I am a little, uh, I have a heightened sensitivity to it. And it's, um, it, can, it can be disheartening, which then can, again, it, it leads to dis diminishment. And it also, I would argue, leads to diminishment on the part of those who are participating in it because it's an energetic disruption of what is in them in, in these individuals and groups you know, some, again, this can happen where, you know, at, if you want to think of it in terms of levels, although I don't like this way of looking at the spiritual path, but if you want to, it can happen from someone who is way, way ahead on the, um, the spiritual journey um, or enlightenment uh, or under, have, um, has a, a deeper uh, grasp of um, the principles of love and yet, at the end of the day, if it is not aligned with love, then what is the value? Isn't there another way we could meet one another in a field of grace? Couldn't we learn from the way we are held in an infinite grace at all times and the way we are sourced from within eternally and the way that we are one with light and life and love, couldn't we learn from that and bring that forward? See, when, when we participate in those sorts of conversations, whether it's in a group of people talking about another individual or just, you know, internally we're participating in that dialogue um, and this ridicule and mockery at the end of the day, it's a choice for reactivity rather than responsibility, the ability to respond. We've chosen reaction instead of a thoughtful uh, choice to respond that involves critical thinking and compassion, to go back what I was saying at the beginning of the video. Um, and when we do this, when we participate in these sorts of, of systems of mockery and ridicule um, or perpetuate that toward any individual, um, it's, it's a choice for in, entrenchment and entrapment, for separation and polarization rather than um, fluidity and a dynamic engagement or adaptability or harmonization or cooperation. It's opposed to the energy of love. When we make a choice for divisive action or speech or a cancel culture collusion, <laughs> rather than the rich reward of relatability, which admittedly for me in, in uh, my own journey, incredibly difficult to navigate. But isn't it worth the risk? Isn't it worth the risk to have that dialogue with one another? Um, if, you, if we can't have that dialogue or we don't, it doesn't feel safe to do so, then at the very least to hold everything we are saying in the context of love. Because see, that's what I see is missing from all of these examples of mockery and ridicule. Where is the container of love? Where's the compassion, the creative compassion to which we are called? Because we are called to be creators of, of um, we've, we're called to the path of soulful creativity, 
soulful collaboration, soulful community. Those are the uh, last three, the uh, pyramid portal of the seven core teachings of Jesus in the Sacred Partnership series. And, and to, uh, to enter into those, those paths to life um, requires sacred witness. It requires sacred witness, and that's what's missing in, in some of what's happening at the collective level and um, in, in groups and with individuals. It may be happening for you in your personal life. It may be happening in your more public life or at work or, you know. So compassion is the first thing, compassion for oneself and whatever you're feeling about yourself toward another, toward a group in society that, that you think doesn't get it um, or toward um, what you see as the enemy to good, what you see as evil. Some days often, actually I really wish I had finished the book that I was writing because that was the point of it. After 9-11, it was called A Holy Terror and it was about turning to truth, letting terror be the invitation to turn to truth. Um, and it wasn't about what actually happened, like who made the Twin Towers fall. But it was prompted by my own encounter. Um, and the invitation is always to return to love and to return to an essential truth, to walk in the way of wholeness, to rest in the arms of God, to receive the grace that is there for us in any moment and to trust that more than we trust uh, the field of right doing or wrong doing, as Rumi put it. To step into the field of recreation that is beyond that, beyond those views of right and wrong, good and bad, or good and evil. There is evil just for the record absolutely there is evil and it is being exposed and I trust that it will be and I will in some cases work for that cause um, and yet working for a higher good is never ever in my um, view that I am using my video in my channel to share my perspective on this it's never a, a free pass to participate in the derision of another individual or group and thereby create separation and division. And we all have to wake up to the fact that that is what is happening from many sides, from many angles, and yet we can't let that lead us to an opting out and a complete giving up. Okay, we can't give up. We can't give in. We've got to give it over to God, to love. That is God to God who is love. So on the collective level, um, you know, there's lots of miscreations, miscreations of the current at the collective level um, that happen because of this culture of collusion that's been created. So as you listen to, um, to others, consider where we have removed ourselves from the river of life, the one river of life itself. You know, Jesus came and he was the light of mankind, of humankind, and that light was the life. That life, I, had, I said that backwards, sorry. That life in him, the river of life he was and that flowed through him was the light of humanity. And this is true here and now. When we ourselves allow ourselves to be in the true current in the river of life, we too become lights. And we bear witness to the one light that we are um, unique reflections of. We've placed ourselves often willingly in, in the much smaller tributaries and without knowing it sometimes we see ourselves as removed from the eternal light uh, from the eternal flow of light from the eternal flow of life from the eternal flow of love that is made manifest in this reality through us 
through us returning to the true stream, to the streams of our soul, to our essential truth that we are here to share that is connected to the one light and the one life and the one love that flows through us all. You know, notice, okay, so let's go back to the, the most obvious collective example. Notice in, you know, the polarization politically, um, there is such rampant conversation that begins with the Democrats, the Republicans. You can insert in that uh, examples from the media world, for example, CNN. Fox News, okay, those are the two obvious. There are many, many, many players, right? And I, I'm being very broad here. You can, this happens, again, down to the infinite, uh, small, little, tiny, tiny, tiniest levels uh, where it's individual, pitted against individual. But let's collectively look at this for a moment. So I'm not discussing that. It's, uh, it's absolutely valid to share facts, perspectives. Um, I think that has great value. But when you mock an entire group of people or when you mock an individual soul, when you mock at all, and, and often, let me just say, uh, in my estimation, those individual souls have indeed been compromised by the very system of enslavement that we purport to be wanting to change and on both sides, okay? And it, not just the two obvious people, as in the, the candidates for the President of the United States of America, um, but those are good examples. Um, but, you know, because I think that that has happened. There's no perfection there, certainly, in terms of um, mental functioning and capacity, in terms of personality traits, in, in terms of um, choices that were made at various junctures of one's life. Um, and so in terms of the broader realities, there's no perfection there. And when you mock a human being who has been used in any way, you are giving power to all the lesser things about the human condition that have in fact led us to where we are at this moment in time. So think about this. Think about the way so many who identify as one side or the other have mocked the other. And where have we done this in our hearts? I know because I have um, come at uh, particular things in our society from both opposing spec uh, ends of the spectrum um, and I know what it means to have those moments within us where we are, oh, how, how ignorant, how could anybody believe that? That's our attitude. I think that when we give that life, rather than choosing to live and love and act in accordance with our values and beliefs and points of view, act, take action, yes. Be that reflection that you are of the light as you know it to be, which by the way, I believe can come from various, it's not one thing, it can come, that's the whole point of what we're living. I don't understand, you know, like, um, like that's, this is where my own, um, shortcomings come into full um, display here is it's one thing perpetuated again and again and again and again so let's think about how you know where we see this and how it begins within us and let's begin there begin within and expand radiantly from there from by remaining by walking in the way of wholeness by remaining one with that river of life by choosing to be sourced from within us rather than external um, sources of supply because that's what's at the heart of a lot of this mockery and, and ridicule as well and you know like this happens so most egregiously and I think most people who you know tune into this video would agree it happens most egregiously right now in terms of mainstream media who cherry pick moments and they paint the picture of what they want to paint because the higher-ups in whatever organization they work with tell them to do that and at the end of the day 
they're there to collect their paycheck, usually by still living in, in what they see as alignment with their values. I did a video I didn't share um, on that in terms of, hey, true journalists. I have a journalism degree and I have a strong background in marketing and public relations and I also have studied propaganda. Um, and you know, I said, you know, hey, hey journalist, hey citizen, you know, hey journalist, let's look at the values, the ethics of journalism. There, there are 10, I forgot the name of the professional organization, but go look them up and let's check ourselves. And let So these political parties, they are out of control and they are in no way, shape or form about a celebration, certainly not of humanity. They're about uh, an old model of holding up one as opposed to another. This is the heart of our division. It comes from a limitation in how we are choosing to live or not live. So on both sides, they release um, propaganda uh, uh, or resort to a game of deflect and defend. And this happens again in the spiritual community. It happens in all systems. It happens in families. It happens in workplaces and in many, many different environments. And it can lead to mockery and ridicule. And you can make anybody look stupid. Um, it's really particularly easy to play up a candidate's flaws in that way, and particularly with the two candidates that we have and have had for many years, um, because the system itself has become so corrupt, because humanity itself is trapped in a culture of collusion. It's gonna take us returning to love and honor and respect for one another. It doesn't mean we let everybody off the hook for crimes against humanity. It doesn't mean that we don't acknowledge that some people have lost their way it doesn't mean that we don't um, hold people accountable for their actions or behaviors, but there's a way to do that that comes from love. So when you put a like or a thumbs up or a polite applause secretly uh, for those who participate in mockery or ridicule, then you're co-creating a world that is devoid of compassion. And we already have a political system that's devoid of compassion, with a few outliers who occasionally bring in moments of compassion. <laughs> um, but we have a system that is uh, set up uh, on uh, all sides to not embody that at the moment. I hold out hope that that will change, and that is changing, that there is something unfolding. Uh, I actually do believe that. I have my own perspective on what that is uh, that I'm not really interested in sharing at the moment. I may do that in the, in the future. Um, but we have so many people within you know, the political system, let's say, who have been treated in such a manner that is devoid of compassion that they themselves have resorted to, treat, uh, to, to creating, perpetuating that, to treating others in that way. And we, the people, must beginning in our own hearts and souls we must throw off the shackles of such a system so whatever your beliefs political persuasion um, viewpoints on the best way forward it begins with love it begins with compassion it begins with speaking truth absolutely taking action that you are called to take but doing so in a manner that is guided by the light of love that is one with your true nature and that is a true reflection um, of the infinite source of love from which we ourselves are born so systems of enslavement i think it's what here's what i'm trying to say systems of enslavement very much exist in societies that claim to be about freedom for this or freedom for that or even freedom for humanity or freedom as a value. There are still systems of enslavement and this includes spiritual societies which are called um, uh, by themselves and by other groups within society by many names. 
Um, so yes, within circles where people are dedicating, uh, are dedicating themselves to or have dedicated their lives to equality and justice in terms of race or ethnic origin or gender identity or other human characteristics, there most certainly are corruptors and traps and ways, if we are not true to snakes and innocent as doves, that we will become ensnared in that culture of collusion. But to withdraw and to fail to make love real in a way that is pure of heart, which looks very different for each of us, to withdraw from that or to shy away from it and to you know think that we're not worthy of doing so is merely a, a capitulation, yeah, capitulation. Oh, and minimization, that's what I was combining the words, and minimization of the infiltration of these bad actors and their directors. So do you see, like you don't let that happen. And don't just wait for it all to be solved by something that is unfolding in the higher realms. Um, also don't take action where it doesn't feel correct for you. Um, follow your heart, follow the way of love and wholeness for you and, and the way that feels correct to you. But in, in all cases, be honoring Even when you are speaking truth to power or, or, or calling out, bringing to light deeds done in the dark, um, there can still be a way, if, if, we, if we're not doing that, if we're doing it in such a way that is full of mockery and ridicule and derision um, or is about punishment, only punishment, I'm not talking about holding people accountable, I'm talking about hatred projected on another or punishment or here stick it to you because I think you've stuck it to me or that sort of pettiness if we resort to that then what we're doing is we're failing to see the uh, wounded one within us the angry one within us the the person that we're seeing out there we're failing to see that that may be within us and per perhaps most likely is or has been within us and we must find our way back to love for that first so that we can show up with honor and respect and love and action tough tough love sometimes that is called for um, but when we when we put all our attention externally and try to clean up what's out there without acknowledging what's in here um, then all we're doing is giving more power to the shenanigans that are being uh, performed up there on this stage in this play which is ultimately a play of light but but our the way in which we show up and move forward regard, regardless of what we're called to speak about or what action we're called to take the way that we show up it, it, it gives power um, and energy and it actually sustains some of the things we are seeking to dismantle at times this is particularly true when one mocks and derides and ridicules. We have to see beyond also the flashing lights and the, um, the sound and the fury of those um, uh, who are content to sit on the sidelines and announce what's going on. Um, and I mean, we need to listen. There are sometimes very valid things that are uh, validity of what's being said, but do, you see, like, we need to be the interpreters of truth by showing up in love to as every situation. Now, we can't do this for every single thing that's ever happening. Um, but when we do show up, when we choose to show up, let us show up in love. Let us show up with strength. Strength and conviction of character. Absolutely. Um, and with that uh, command for accountability in some cases. But let it be in the context of love and aligned with the true heart of God. We have to choose to walk right up to that stage and we have to stand with compassion. We have to bear sacred witness to it all. The inequity itself that we may have seen, the imbalances, the layers of usury and greed and the predatory behaviors on top of that and it's prey upon prey upon prey, and this is the world that we created, not just in the world of child trafficking, 
just being brought to light, but in many, many, many ways. And it exists everywhere. We must, we must bear witness to it, and we must choose to be the light of Christ in, in, in my way of understanding it, or to be aligned with the love that is God, to be one with that river of life, the universal truth. We must be the love that we are. And yeah, within circles, um, I would say also within circles where um, people are uh, dedicating themselves to or have dedicated their lives to freedom for faceless victims um, who have been stolen from us and preyed upon, um, here too there are predators in this world that are not the obvious predators. There are the obvious predators and they need to be held to full account and will be and are being and I, uh, wherever I see it, will be a part of that and I also would invite anybody that's listening to this, I think most people who are listening to this would know this, but that um, there are things unfolding behind the scenes that look one way and are another. Um, but there are those who say, for example, that they work for this good uh, and, and do actually in part work for this good, but they use this goodness to achieve another aim. And sometimes that's m more uh, difficult to see and actually I can't even speak to it because I only feel and, and sense the energy of it um, but I think there are those uh, who can speak to it but here too uh, here also in this realm also to see that and then to withdraw our energy or to fail to make love real in a way that is pure of heart results in the perpetuation of this deep and troubling truth in our society not only uh, the issue of in this case child trafficking per se but also the um, webs of disillusionment and deceit that are a part of that, that and what is reflecting itself as or or, uh, or put, propping itself up as one thing which is in fact another now I'm not saying it's not always sometimes it is but it's not always the exact opposite it's not always pure evil you know and it's not always aligned with the, the actual perpetuators um, of the predators who are harming innocent souls it is sometimes but sometimes it's something else and there's a, there's something else there's like a, a different um, energy there and so that's what we're really doing here we're clearing the earth of such patterns of perpetuated abuse that limit and deny freedom to one another knowingly and unknowingly so we have to show up to it um, because when we don't, it just drives it back underground and it robs us of the opportunity to see the, uh, the raging one within us, the trickster within us, um, the, the um, preyed upon within us, the loneliness within us, the anger and rage within us, the terror within us, and the light and the truth and the way within us we must bear the light of christ we must come to every situation from a place of love we must be the love we are so i'm going to leave you with with, with this first on a personal level you know from my heart to yours and um as we're making our our way here you know here's what i have to offer I don't hold any ill will um, toward any individuals who have participated in mockery or ridicule of myself or others uh, or public figures. Um, you know, for the cases where that has been directed at me, which aren't many, um, it's not like that's that's not the primary purpose for this video. But in the cases where that has been the case, um, you know, it doesn't. I'm not going to bend or break to this perspective that's not authentic to me because I'm going to place myself in the context of love and at the same time I will seek to find a way in moments where I lose this connection to honor and respect and value um, for the light and the life and the love that, that you are. 
So even if thousands or millions of people see and believe what someone a lie that someone has perpetuated about you, I know, um, and I hope you know, um, that I and you belong to God. I know who I am. I am that I am. I am light. And I have come to bring forward a particular play of light. I am life and I have come to embody an essential story of life. I am love and I have come to be a revolution of love, a grace-filled revolution of love. I choose light, I choose life, I choose love. So remind yourself of who you are, I am. Remind yourself of why you have come to be. And remind yourself of what you choose in any given moment and let that be light and life and love and to align yourself with that. So right now this choose, uh, um, this choosing that I am doing in the moment is to reclaim all that has been taken from me, to cleanse it, to purify it and to uh, return it to its state of wholeness so that I am able to gift it back to the world. I am Dawn and I am on the way. And so who are you? And are you on the way? And are you truly placing yourself in the heart of the great I am and walking in the way of love and wholeness? In terms of our collective passage, this is a watershed moment. This, by this, I mean August 20th here at uh, 127 p.m. on August the 20th, um, 2020, um, particularly now through um, likely December. Um, this is a collective passage like no other. It's a watershed moment. Who do you want to be individually? Who do you want to be collectively? What do you want to stand for? Who do you want humanity to be? Do you truly want to diminish another so that you can elevate your leader or your viewpoint? or your right way. Even if you believe it with your whole heart to be the right thing, is it aligned? Is the way you're speaking to that aligned with your view of life and the world that you want to see? Is it really aligned with the heart of God and with love to, to strip and shred another human being of their dignity regardless of what they have participated in, regardless of their shortcomings, regardless of their state of health and well-being, whether that be physical, mental, emotional, spiritual? Is that the world you want? Or do you want to truly surrender your heart to God who is love and in whom there is no thing but love? And come make every choice from that context of love. And it's a constant course correction, of course. But when we place ourselves in that river of life, and align ourselves with the heart of God, then we make certain choices. So are you perpetuating a world where, where we resort to ridicule overtly toward a so-called opponent um, or also in more sinister and subtle ways that ridicule those who hold a different uh, perspective, often from the side? That's what a, like, let's just call that what it is, you know, psychologically. Do a little research there and you'll know what I mean. Um, or could you perhaps choose a more excellent way? And what is that more excellent way? We all need to explore that for ourselves. A more excellent way. We must love the fullness of the spectrum. Is the, the last thing I wanna leave us with, the fullness of the spectrum and all of the individual colors. So some, yes, have been deprived of light so long that they looked muddied and thick. And ugh, who wants that? they're weighted down to the degree that they're easily discarded by so many and still they belong to light and these two are the children of God and some have been lifted and vibrate and they're light and a quick frequency and it seems so high um, that it's difficult to believe that those people know anything at all about this world and so it's easy to dismiss them and still they belong to this world to now this moment of the now that is our next opportunity window and they are one with the family of humanity they too belong and some have gotten lost in the middle because they look so ordinary and they may have been made to feel like they have nothing to offer because they're just true blue yellow mellow mellow yellow <laughs> um, 
you know, a hot red mess or whatever else, right? Like, or boring, you know, that would be, at, at some points I've been called various things, but you know, like I can be a little earthy and, and, and slow in some ways. Um, yeah, but we all belong and others are really fra flashy, you know, like their brilliance is blinding um, or can even seem garish at times. And so it's like, oh, tone it down, tone it down. We wanna see, we wanna change the other. We want to say no, too much, not enough, too dark. Uh, come back, pull them back, you know, whatever it is, can't we see it's one spectrum, an infinite fullness. This is the fullness of God. And it is one play of light and each equally belongs and will all be returned to light. And we are this prism that has one source of light. And we are called to love one another. Jesus' last words to his disciples, believe it or not, it was true, it was true but what, you know, one of, some of his last words, at least when they were gathered together in the same room, were a, a new command, I give you love one another as I have loved you love one another so you must love one another by this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another i think it's in john 13 um, and this was immediately followed by peter proclaiming that he would lay down his life for his teacher and we all know how that story ended and where it led peter himself um, until the point of his life, which many don't talk about. I don't know that it's written in any of the, the scriptures, the treasure texts that uh, are, uh, have, have been found <laughs> or recovered from the dark places they've been hidden. But in any case, you know, Peter did see the light in the end of his life, and he was crucified upside down. And before this, um, I believe, this is my personal view, that he he saw what had been created and it grieved him. So Peter belongs, Judas belongs. I'm just using those as examples from the biblical story, but what I'm inviting us to do is to see that this enemy out there that you think is the devil incarnate, whether it's from a different political party or from a um, someone uh, trying to push their agenda on humanity, at large, uh, or uh, uh, just a person in your in a rabble rouser in your neighborhood, or uh, that person who gets under your skin, it's it's one play of light. We are players on a stage, but we can choose in any moment if we want to play a role in one story or another, and we can choose to walk off that stage and begin again in love. We can choose to return to the heart of God, who is love, and to rest within that heart, that is the true heart of humanity. We can choose to see all others through that light, through the eyes of love. We can bear witness. We can rest within that heart of love and beat with it until that heartbeat of humanity grows strong again and rings out with the true tones across the spectrum of humanity and every single one come to know that he or she is light and life and love and that we belong to one another.